lights, none of them bearing a frequency signature similar to our sun. So they're very disharmonic. They lead to things like ADHD. I mean, look at kids, you know? Like, try to put a kid for... You must sit in that chair for eight hours, eat sugar, and sit under these lights, and if you act out, we're calling your parents. I mean, it's crazy. That's insane. So, we got to expose ourselves to natural light. Look, there's, this artificial light's not a replacement, and here's how you can tell. If you go out in the daytime, and you see how much light there is, then you go in your house at night and flick the lights on, it feels bright, right? What if you took that light bulb and you went and you put it outside in the night? It doesn't, even, it doesn't make a difference. It's hard for us to tell because we got real sensitive eyes, but the amount of lumens coming out of a light bulb compared to daylight, it, it's, it's not even enough to be fractional. It's not enough. So we need to definitely expose ourselves to more light. And light is really fire, right? That's the true essence of the fire element. In a wild fire, and we could go on about fire, but there's a lot I can say about fire. You know, burning fires is a beautiful thing too, but I want to focus on this idea of light. Here's the thing. That's fire. Where are we going to get wild water, wild earth, wild air, wild fire? Outside. We spend a lot of time inside. 98% of most humans' experience is experienced indoors. 98%. We're super domesticated. Just like uh, you know, your cat might have a litter box. You got one too. We call it a toilet, <laughs> right? You got your little feeding area. You got your little kennel, you know, upstairs, the little bedroom kennel, right? And we spend our lives like domesticated animals inside. Those days are, I think, coming to an end soon. We not only live like that, but we actually value that type of lifestyle. In fact, we, we work, you know. 18 hours a day, 10 hours a day, in order to get more of that type of domesticated lifestyle. And in the end, we become mushy, and I really believe we become a lot unhappier. We, we lose our zest for life because there's nothing to challenge you. See, the wolf has challenges every single day. The deer has challenges every single day. These wild mushrooms had challenges every single day. They live in harmony with the elements, and they live with just enough struggle to challenge them to reproduce better every generation. We call that adaptation or evolution. When we start to downgrade ourselves through domestication, we start to devolve, and we start to lose our edge. And without that edge, we become very, very sad, and we start to seek outside ourselves for adventures, and we get them in the form of what? Movies? Disneyland. Shopping? <laughs> uh, you guys, I'm not, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> but what's amazing is that by applying a few of these techniques, a few of these tools, you know, even having an infrared sauna in your house, even having, you know, the air filtration unit, we can start getting back to where we really ultimately want to be, where our body does start to get challenged. Like, who would want to go to a gym that has the lightest weights? Hey, if I'm the gym, you know, they we use uh, toothpicks to work out with. It would be crazy. You go to the gym that has the heaviest weights, right? And the, the tools that have the most resistance, because that's what we want for our body, because we know intuitively that's what's going to really deliver the best results. But in every other area, with our mind, do you think really our entertainment system that we have at home is going to challenge our mind? You know, we have a big screen TV with all the best movies, but how challenged are we really in our mind? And we have to ask that question with our body. You come up to me with me, I'll take you through the forest on mushrooms. And you see what it's like to be out there. You see what it's like. You see what it's like to actually really go out there and look for your food. It changes a lot of our beliefs. We've got a lot of what I like to call utopian ideas about nature. Oh, nature's like Candyland. All day sitting on the beach under the sea. Yeah, right. Not where I live. I mean, it's a challenge. But that challenge is what gives me zest for life. And I think we're all craving that. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be here. You'd probably be across the street. I was with Dave in Canada, and he said, you know, why, why go to a gym? His forest was his gym. He, yeah. We got more exercise yeah. hanging out, picking berries, and forging through the, you know, the forest than I could have gotten, you know, three hours in the gym. And it was you can turn that amazing. into your lifestyle approach, such that if you go to the gym now, wild food can become your gym. Go into the spring and carry a few five-gallon bottles of water. You got it's like your gym. Now remember this. This is what the sages say: before enlightenment. Chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. It's those simple things. Get out there and start doing these things. And replace all these old behaviors which were surrogates for what you could be doing. 
And you'll see that you'll become happier and your zest for life will become more pronounced. And know that everything on those tables in that other room, all that stuff are individual approaches, but what brings them together is when your whole lifestyle becomes a reflection of it. So it's not just like, oh, I'm going to continue to live a sedentary life and eat goji berries. No, that's that's a good start. But let's use these tools to get ourselves back to being more like, less like that chihuahua, more like that German shepherd. Let's, if you're anchored in there, let's move even further towards being wild. Let's move forward towards being wild. Because, what just got said over there? <laughs> There's a, look, I want to close it with this. We have tales, all, all cultures have tales of an age of the gods and goddesses on the earth. An age of the gods and goddesses on the earth. That's us. We lived like that before. We can live like that again. In power, in love, with a warrior's heart, wise as serpent, gentle as doves, powerful again, claiming our power, and not being free, but being sovereign. If you don't know what that word means, I'd look it up. You can become sovereign again, feral again, take your life back into your own hands, But it's not going to happen in your living room. It's going to happen outside. Take these tools, apply them. Become gods, become goddesses again. Begin to witness that in each other. Begin to recognize that in yourself. Activate your full potential. Turn yourself on and find out what you can really be. Because there's a whole other level we can take it to. No matter where you are in this. No matter how many times you've gone around the sun. There's another level. Let's go there. Meet me there. I'm going to keep going. Please keep coming. Please come with me. Let's just keep moving forward. Let's see what our potential is. Now is really the time. So um, let's do that. No, what's great too about what Daniel's saying is that we don't have to spend a lot of money to walk outside barefoot on the earth. We don't have to spend a lot of money to walk in the forest. And the foods that I know David and, and Daniel find when they're out there, it's, it's remarkable. Like all the stuff you see on Daniel's uh, table out there, he found. He didn't buy those rishi mushrooms. He didn't find, buy that shaga. You know, in other words, no one grew them for me. No one domesticated them. I found this mushroom this year. Now, there's a mushroom called lion's mane. You guys know about that mushroom? Yeah. Okay, this is the first year that I found that mushroom. And, I mean, that must be a humbling thing to find in the forest. You come across this big white brain in the forest. It doesn't just look like a brain. It rebuilds your brain. And uh, so I started to study it. And it's got a name in Asia, in Japan. It's called Yamabushitaki. Yama means mountain, Bushi means warrior, Taki means mushroom. It's the mountain warrior's mushroom. And the the, the mountain warriors are the mystic sages. See, we have this thing in our culture where we separate, like, spirituality from the warrior path. Like, they're separate. They're not in Asia, man. The most... The monks, like the Shaolin monks... Those are Buddhist monks, and they're the most fierce martial artists on the planet. At the same time, both... The mountain warriors were the warriors, the people with the warrior heart, who took to the wild again and roamed the wilds to develop their spirit bodies. They were the longevity sages. They were the great Taoists. Yamabushi taught me, that mushroom taught me about that. And what it basically taught me was that we can combine the warrior part of ourselves, and some people just got that part shut right off. That's part of you. Turn that on. Use that.